Let's talk about the LCL. That's also referred to as the fibular collateral ligament. Uh, isolated injuries are extremely rare. This is usually uh, in concert with a posterior corner injury. <clears throat> the mechanism injury is most frequently from um, athletic events and uh, motor vehicle accidents. It's a, a direct blow uh, to the weight-bearing knee. Uh, it also involves excessive varus stress, uh, which blows out that lateral side. The LCL is a tubular core-like structure, about three to four millimeters in diameter. It originates um, uh, on the lateral uh, femoral epicondyle, and uh, the insertion um, is posterior and proximal to the insertion of the popliteus. Anatomically, um, it's the most anterior structure on the proximal fibula. <clears throat> so in order um, of insertion from anterior to posterior, it goes LCL, then the popliteofibular ligament, uh, followed by the biceps femoris, which is most posterior. The blood supplies the genic genicular arteries. Now, the function of the LCL is to provide uh, most of the restraint at, at low degrees of flexion. And because the LCL is located behind the axis of knee rotation, <clears throat> this uh, is tight in extension and lacks in flexion. We talked earlier about the layers of the lateral side of the knee. Um, the LCL and posterior lateral corner injury. Now there's a grading system where grade three is greater than 10 millimeters of lateral opening without an endpoint. <clears throat> Symptomatically, these patients will have instability near full extension and they'll have lateral joint line pain and swelling. On exam, uh, with a varus stress test, we'll have varus instability at zero, zero degrees and 30 degrees of flexion. And as we talked about with the dial test, uh, there's varus instability and increased tibial external rotation at 30 degrees of flexion. And this implies combined LCL and postural corner injuries. On exam, if you examine their gait, they'll have an, a hyperextension or a varus lateral thrust gait. You also want to be aware that they can have a perineal nerve injury, which is located on the lateral side which can occur uh, with uh, any sort of lateral knee injury. Radiographs include an AP and lateral, as well as various stress radiographs. On MRI, uh, you'll see uh, useful information about the severity of the injury, as well as the location, whether it's uh, an avulsion or a mid-substance tear. <clears throat> non operative treatment includes uh, immobilization, progressive range of motion, functional rehabilitation. And these can be for, um, for mild sprains, grades one and two. And they can uh, return to sports in six to eight weeks. Uh, you can get progressive varus uh, hyperextension laxity uh, if there's an unrecognized push lateral corner injury as well. Operative treatment is indicated uh, for grade three LCL injuries. Um, if there's rotatory instability involving the LCM push lateral corner, and also if there's a concomitant uh, ACL or PCL rupture as well. Surgical uh, techniques include uh, um, an acute LCL repair. Uh, this is a lateral approach to the knee. It uses the interval between the IT band and the biceps femoris, and you incise the fascia between the ITB and biceps to expose the LCL insertion on the fibular head. You can use suture anchors for repair of the avulsed ligament. Um, you can also uh, use direct suture repair if there's mid-substance ruptures. For uh, LCL and postural corner reconstruction, uh, the approach is the lateral approach to the knee. Uh, there's a different uh, variety of techniques. You can use a single-stranded graft, like a bone patellar tendon bone for isolated LCL injuries. You could also do the Larson technique, which is the fibula-based reconstruction, where you have a, a hamstring graft that passed through a bone tunnel in the fibular head, and the limbs are crossed in a figure of eight fashion fixed to a lateral femur. <clears throat> there's also a transtibial double bundle reconstruction technique, where you can use a split Achilles tendon uh, allograft, one limb is fixed to the fibula head, and the second limb is brought through, posterior, uh, uh, through the posterior tibia to reconstruct the popliteal fibular ligament. And this provides a nice anatomic reconstruction of all those different structures. Complications of uh, this injury uh, can be persistent varus or hyperextension laxity, as well as perineal nerve injury, uh, stiffness, and some hard re -rotation. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.